Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for Sunday the 9th of January 2021. In this video, Janet reads us our Bible reading, the account of the wise men visiting Jesus, uh, and then we think about it uh, before expressing our faith at the end of the video. Today's reading is from the New Testament, Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went to, on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And have, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It seems fairly obvious that Matthew and Luke, the writers of the first and third Gospels, didn't know each other and didn't collaborate in what they were writing about the birth of Jesus. They wrote for different audiences. Matthew was writing for a Jewish audience uh, who were concerned with the fact that uh, Jesus was the fulfilment of the prophecies in the Old Testament. And so he includes a number of quotations from the Old Testament to demonstrate how Jesus fulfills them. Whereas Luke was writing on the whole for a Gentile audience, uh, an audience uh, of people uh, who had heard the gospel uh, perhaps through St. Paul, because of course Luke was a travelling companion of Paul, uh, and who were concerned uh, with things like how the gospel worked out uh, in practice. They both had copies of Mark's Gospel in front of them as they wrote. You can tell that by the way they made extensive use of Mark. And they also uh, both had some kind of account of the sayings of Jesus uh, in uh, something which theologians nowadays call uh, the source document Q, uh, which uh, majored uh, on Jesus' teachings rather than on Jesus' actions. Uh, but there was obviously uh, some other common understanding that they had of Jesus, and people like me think the most likely explanation for that uh, is that there were various things about Jesus which had always been widely known and which had been handed down. And in these birth stories, uh, they obviously uh, both uh, list the names of Jesus' mother and father, Joseph and Mary. They both say that Jesus was born of a virgin. They both say that his birth was announced in advance by an angel appearing to one of his parents. Uh, they both say that the birth took place uh, in Bethlehem, which was the city of David. They both say that after his birth, he was visited uh, by some people who emphasised uh, his divinity and who brought news uh, of some miraculous way in which they'd been uh, uh, informed of who Jesus was. 
and they both have him uh, living in his uh, in the town of Nazareth in his early life uh, Matthew uh, by dint of the escape uh, going to Egypt uh, and both of them uh, use these different birth stories as a way of explaining who Jesus is and Matthew of course does it no less uh, than Luke in this story uh, of the visit of the wise men, uh, Matthew is saying something very specific to the Jewish audience that he's writing for. The Jews expected that the Messiah would come as the salvation of his people Israel. He would come in order to throw out the Jews, the, to throw out the Romans from the Jewish uh, state. Uh, he would come in order to re-establish the kingship of God among his people. He would come in order to make Israel be top nation. No, no, says Matthew, uh, it's far more than that that Jesus has come for. Jesus has come to be Lord and King of every nation. He has come uh, to help the, the uh, Gentiles to acknowledge uh, that God is the ruler of all. He has come to allow the Gentiles uh, to have an equal share with God's people. Not equal in the sense that they already knew God's law and tried to put it into practice, but equal in the sense that they now have the grace of God for them as well as the Jewish people. Uh, these heathen kings who came uh, to visit Jesus, they came in order to say, Jesus is our king as well as your king. Uh, he is our God and he has brought his grace to us. And Matthew uh, uses uh, the visit uh, to say three things about the nature of Jesus. And they're summarised in the three gifts. Jesus is given gold because he is king. He is given frankincense because incense means a connection between us and God. He is our priest. He is the one who brings us close to God. And he is given uh, myrrh as a, a burial uh, token, as a way of saying that his death is important. Jesus is our king and our high priest, and he is also our sacrifice to bring us into God's presence. Jesus uh, needs that kind of profile here in our society today. Uh, there are many people uh, who have asked the question, well, I wonder if Matthew and Luke made up these stories in order uh, to uh, kind of emphasise the role of Jesus in our lives today. I remember when I was at school, uh, our religious education teacher once asked the class, where was Jesus born? Uh, and as he picked on me, uh, and I couldn't quite these, bring these things to, to mind, I kind of said accidentally, Nazareth. And he said, yes, you're right. He said, this business of Jesus travelling to Bethlehem in order to fulfil the prophecy uh, was simply uh, a kind of story uh, that they had put about in order to emphasise Jesus' credibility as the Messiah. And I thought about that quite hard uh, after Mr Ross said it uh, in school all those years ago. Uh, but I eventually came to realise that actually uh, that's pure supposition on the part of the people who thought it. Uh, and it isn't borne out by the evidence. Uh, if Jesus had not been born in Bethlehem, then the early Christians would have been quite well aware of the fact. Uh, and they wouldn't have invented stories uh, that put him somewhere else uh, in order to try and make something like that. If Jesus had not been born uh, in Bethlehem, uh, what difference would it have made, uh, be given uh, that uh, his deity and the quality of his teaching were quite obvious uh, from his earthly ministry? Uh, if Jesus had not been born in Bethlehem, uh, why bother uh, to go to the uh, extent of trying to fabricate stories uh, about him? Isn't it much more likely that the reason that Matthew and Luke both put Jesus' birth in Bethlehem is because actually that's where he was born? Uh, he was born in Bethlehem uh, in order uh, to uh, demonstrate various things to us, but he was born in Bethlehem because that's just the way it happened. 
And likewise, uh, with this visit of the wise men, uh, Matthew is not inventing the gifts in order to try to help us to understand who Jesus is. Rather, he's using the gifts as a way uh, of helping us to further understand Jesus in our lives. What would it mean for us to make Jesus king of our lives and priest of our lives and sacrifice for our lives? Uh, it would mean, wouldn't it, that we would give him the allegiance of our hearts, that we would try and uh, do things the way that he would want uh, as loyal subjects of his kingdom. It would mean that we would avail ourselves of the opportunity of getting close to God because if Jesus has opened the way by being our priest, the one who stands between us and God, uh, then he gives us confidence to express our prayers to him, knowing that he hears us. And uh, it would give us uh, an assurance about our destiny because if Jesus' death has taken away our sins, then it means at the end there is no condemnation for those who believe. Uh, the Bible comes together uh, in the fact that the different parts of it uh, all say these things about Jesus and it's up to you and me to appropriate them for our own lives. Let's us make Jesus our king, our priest and our sacrifice. Let's avail ourselves of the opportunity to be part of his kingdom and to speak freely to our God and Father and to have confidence about the future where we're going. Many years ago, on a group called Christian Songwriting Organisation that I belonged to, somebody asked if there were any creed songs which were suitable uh, for Christmas. So I decided to write one, and here it is. Jesus, little baby in a stall Jesus, wrapped in clothes and still so small We believe in you We acclaim you as our Lord Jesus, son of David in a shed Jesus, sleeping in a manger bed We believe in you We acknowledge you the Son of God above Nature God, you made yourself small, so now your name is for above all, and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow down. Your humble birth led on to the cross, where you would die to pay for our loss, so every tongue shall own that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Jesus, angels worshipped at your birth. Jesus, Son of God, yet born on earth, we believe in you. We acclaim you as our Lord. Jesus, shepherd saw you where you laid. Jesus, God in human form displayed, we believe in you. We acknowledge you, the Son of God above. In nature, God, you made yourself small. So now your name is for above all. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow down. Your humble birth led on to the cross, where you would die to pay for our loss. And every tongue shall own that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. That's the end of the second of these three videos of worship. Uh, and again, to follow us into the third, uh, where we spend some time praying as well as worshipping, uh, please just choose it when it appears on the screen after I've finished speaking. I will see you there.